Restoration Artifacts presents fascinating items made and used by people over the span of two centuries involved in the restoration. While these artifacts are remarkable, it is the stories of the people behind them that really capture our hearts. Each one of these people lived lives full of challenges, obstacles, and risks of their future. And they faced those challenges with courage, faith, and perseverance. We know this because of the stories left in their journals. The artifacts, uh, especially having them there and seeing them, you realize they, they're real. And the people that used them are real. So it does give you a much better appreciation, a good physical connection with the past. Smith family genealogy that you will find in Sophronia Smith's 1826 family Bible that was printed in Saratoga Springs, New York. It is of interest to most people to see what the Bible looked like at the time of Joseph Smith when he read James 1.5. And here we can see, it's the, this is the King James version of the Bible. And right there, verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So when Joseph was reading in the book of James, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. That's why he went into the grove and prayed. The box that Hiram actually got from Alvin after he passed away, Joseph was told by Angel Moroni that he needed to get a box with a good lock on it before he got the plates. When I was a child, uh, my grandfather at times would pull the, the artifacts out to show us, and uh, we uh, really had a very personal connection with the artifacts. So this is a gold-plated pocket watch, very nice for the time. With a value of $30, that lets you know that the average person, a day laborer, would have had to work about a month to afford this. In all likelihood, this would have been a gift to the prophet because he was rarely had an abundance of money. This, it's hard to see, but it's J.S. Jr., Joseph Smith Jr. And then on here, it also is J.S. Jr. But this is a watch, um, something that Joseph had to give up to post bail and he never had the funds to reacquire this watch. And so by the mid 1840s, this watch was gone and it, it's taken a different um, trail over the years where it's been, but it left the Smith family probably by 1843. To this day, when you go to the remains of the last known temple in Jerusalem, you see these little bits of paper uh, stuffed into the cracks of the ruins of the ancient temple, the Western Wall. For the religious, they write names, names of people that are being prayed for. Is that just an accidental or an echo reflection in the restoration and the names that we pray for in the temple? In 1951, the primary general president, Adele Cannon Howells, wanted paintings depicting scenes from the Book of Mormon to be published in the Children's Friend magazine. On her own, with her own money, she commissioned Latter-day Saint artist Arnold Freeberg to paint a series of 12 Book of Mormon scenes. Arnold was a member of the church, and with this commission, he studied Book of Mormon people, teachings, and key events to visualize how they may have appeared. He conceptualized many details and began sketching and painting. After completing the first paintings, a visitor sent photos of them to the Hollywood film director Cecil B. DeMille, who was preparing to film the movie The Ten Commandments. DeMille met with Arnold Freeberg, and based on his Book of Mormon paintings, he hired him to create artwork to set the tone for the visualization of the Ten Commandments. Arnold Freeberg painted scenes that were referenced by the production designer and art director to bring to life the characters, costumes, and events in the Ten Commandments. The artists who animated the parting of the Red Sea built upon the vision Arnold Freeberg set forth. 
Freeberg introduced President David O. McKay to Cecil B. DeMille, and the two of them became close friends. Arnold Freeberg was nominated for an Academy Award for his work on the Ten Commandments. After the film was released, Freeberg completed the twelve Book of Mormon paintings. Years later, his most famous painting is The Prayer at Valley Forge, depicting George Washington kneeling in prayer during the War of Independence. Arnold Freeberg's Book of Mormon paintings were published in copies of the Book of Mormon for many years. They bring to life the people and events in the Book of Mormon. These detailed oil paintings are themselves restoration artifacts. The original paintings are framed and on display in Salt Lake City in the Church Conference Center in the Book of Mormon Gallery. Whole generations of saints have grown up visualizing the people in the Book of Mormon as Arnold Freeberg conceptualized and portrayed them. These paintings are restoration artifacts. <laughs>